Welcome back to No Sticks, No Bricks. All right, this week we are in... Las Vegas. Vegas, Vegas baby. So I have never been to Vegas. My tour guide here, <laughs> my beautiful wife, is gonna show me all around. So we are very excited and we're gonna bring you with us. So enjoy. time here at courtside has come to an end we are packing her up friends over there harold and sydney they are packing their rig up as well they are heading to texas to go to the switch it up huddle uh, with todd and sheila and we are going to vegas we're gonna meet up with some friends in vegas we got a wedding to go to and it is also our anniversary in a couple weeks so we actually booked a vegas trip from alaska back in 2020 then of course COVID hit everything got canceled and so we're kind of going to make up for that trip that got canceled now so we are uh we actually have reservations in there starting tomorrow but we are going to try to get in a day early um if we can't we'll just uh boondock somewhere between there and here we're at quartzite right now and it's about 200 miles between destinations so we're looking forward to Vegas, looking forward to seeing some of our friends from Alaska too. So it's gonna be awesome. Well, we really enjoyed our time out here boondocking. It was just absolutely beautiful, especially in the evenings, just gorgeous evenings, stars everywhere. Uh, we did happen to pick the one week where it was like 95, 97, 94. <laughs> um, so it was pretty hot during the day but our solar system and our batteries did really well. We, you know, since we only got four Battleborn batteries, we can't, you know, run all of our ACs at once and all that, but we can run one AC for about four hours or so. So what we did was close the bedroom door and then, you know, that mid afternoon nap, everybody likes to have every now and again, close the bedroom door, turn on the bedroom AC, get it nice and cool. Don't have to fire up the generator. It was great. And then, um, of course, as uh, as we're you know running the ACs, the solar's recharging the batteries, so worked out pretty good. Would like to have a bigger system, but I think this will do for now. You ready to go to Vegas, babe? I am. Yeah. I'm ready. Get to see some friends. Yep. Get to go to a wedding. A couple Cel of our friends are getting married. Celebrate our anniversary. Celebrate our anniversary. I was just telling about how our uh, 2020 trip got schwacked. Thanks, COVID. <laughs> Thanks, COVID. <laughs> this week's video will be about Vegas. We are back at the RV pit stop uh, dumping and just wanted to let you guys know that they have three different dump stations and they even supply hoses for you so you don't even have to get out your own hose. So that's pretty slick. Get rid of that weight. Yeah, this is the best place to dump fresh water. I had a lady though one time, I was dumping fresh water at a dump station. She's like, I've never seen anybody do that before. Why would you do that? I'm like, cause I don't want to haul it. <laughs> All right, brother. It was fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Well, have fun at the huddle. Yeah. Tell Todd and Sheila hi for us. We certainly will. And everybody else, all the Switch crew. Guys, we are staying at Thousand Trails Las Vegas RV Resort. And tonight we are heading down to the Strip. Down to the Strip, yep. Jason's we're, first time. Yeah, I've never been to Vegas before. Been to Reno, uh, but never made it to Vegas. I was supposed to come here like at least five times while I was in the military for an exercise that's called Red Flag. But just never was meant to be, I guess. For some reason it always got canceled or something happened, so. It's good to be here in Vegas finally. Yes, we're excited. And we're going to where? Fremont Street? No, we're actually nope. gonna go to the Bellagio first so I can show him the, the light show. The light show? He doesn't know. I don't know. 
<laughs> He's a, vage, a Vegas virgin. <laughs> I'm a double V, double Vegas v. virgin. So we ordered an Uber and we're walking up to the front gate. So that way we can, you know, partake in some adult beverages if we want, not have to worry about parking and all that good stuff. How much is the Uber? Well, so earlier today it was only $16. Uh-oh. It's $31 right Holy now. Holy crap. So. Really? Dang. So. Still cheaper than a DUI. No doubt. <laughs> oh, now it's only $17. Something. $17? $17 so. one way. One way. Six so. minutes away. About 34 bucks round trip, not to include tip. Correct. Cool. We need a mask. Isn't COVID over yet? So they're doing a lot of construction here at Las Vegas Thousand Trails, um, upgrading their electrical system. So I think we're gonna get some more 50 amp services. So the Las Vegas Thousand Trails is one of those parks where you have to pay an extra three bucks a day for a 50 amp service. So just FYI on that. So it is pretty tight here and uh, not really big rig friendly. However, we got super lucky because we park next to a site that is a seasonal site and the owner's not here. So they told us we could park our truck in that site. So that worked out pretty good. Sometimes you just get lucky. So they do have cabins here as well. Wow, that was fast. The Uber is here already. And you said Henderson? No, that's in that's in Las Vegas. All right, we are here at MGM Grand and our awesome Uber driver, Murado. Did I get that right? Narado. Narado, oh my bad. <laughs> That's a cool name though, Narado. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, so anyway, he uh, did an awesome job getting us here, and he is actually thinking about full-time RVing with his wife. So, are you excited about that? You oh, know? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know we'll see what happens. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll, well we'll talk about it. We'll get an airstream and right. hit the road. You know, airstream. <laughs> there you go. And he followed our channel just a couple minutes ago. So obviously, for man, sure. if you have any questions, hit us up on uh, Instagram. It's probably the best way to get a hold of us. But no, for questions. sure. We'll and we'll, uh, we'll we'll set you All up right. on a sweet sweet itinerary. Oh, for sure. Thank so. you. I appreciate right. that. So Y'all are awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you, you have a good one, right? Yep, you too. All right. Wow. Beautiful weather too right now. What is it like 70 degrees? Probably gonna turn five hundred dollars into like I don't know two million dollars or nothing or zero dollars. <laughs>
put the hair up. I haven't even had any drinks yet, and I'm already hot. <laughs> It's so great being able to do this stuff as full-time RVers. Just, you know, being able to travel whenever you want just kind of opens up a whole bunch of doors. We've seen a lot of stuff in the last 10 months. There's definitely a lot of wacky tobacco being smoked around here. I think I'm getting stoned just by walking around. So one of the very cool things we got to do while we were stationed in Germany was to go to Paris. I'll see if I can uh, bring up the video of us when we were at the Eiffel Tower at night. It's really cool to watch the lights turn on. So we are at the, the Bellagio, seeing, uh, checking out the light show. So we're back in the RV park and it's raining. It was beautiful all night long. <laughs> but it's pretty funny because we had a different Uber driver on the way there than on the way back. And both of them are considering full-time RVing. Both of them, it was pretty cool. It is kind of crazy. <clears throat> yeah, it's become so popular. So of course, you know, we let them know about our channel and, and made sure that uh, we let them know that to hit us up if they have any questions about preparing to full-time RV. Because, you know, we spent two and a half, three years preparing to full-time RV. It's probably the hardest part about full-time RVing is preparing, yeah. downsizing, Down. selling everything. Trying to figure out what you need, what you don't need. Right, exactly. And then, you know, planning out your first year of where you're going to go, what you're going to see. Expenses. So, expenses, right. You got to do it all within a budget. So, anyway, we just thought that was kind of interesting that both... <laughs> Uber drivers were both wanting to go full-time RV. So pretty neat, pretty neat. We had a good first night here in Vegas. We are getting ready to head to Nellis Air Force Base. It's probably about, I don't know, 30 minutes from here or so. Itty Bitty is do her rabies shot. And then while we're on base, we're gonna hit up the commissary, do some grocery shopping. I'm gonna try to get a haircut, take advantage of all the things that we can do since we're near a base. So I feel like we gotta tell you about what happened here a couple nights ago. So our neighbor, a car was broke into, the, the RV next to us, kind of broken into it. They, they forgot to lock the door, so they didn't lock the door. However, somebody got in there, rummaged through their stuff, and stole a set of their camper keys. So when they went to report it, they were also told that a vehicle had been stolen that night and someone's wallet had been stolen out of someone's vehicle that night. So there was actually barbed wire around the fence uh, the perimeter of this RV park. So apparently they've had issues in the past where people are climbing over the wall and then, you know, rummaging through uh, RV or stuff. So we're making sure that we're locking everything up, leaving lots of lights on at night uh, for security purposes. I already talked to my neighbors, make sure that the lights weren't gonna bother them. They said no problem. So um, better to have it all lit up because we don't want anything stolen. Itty bitty, are you ready to go to the vet? Are you gonna go to the vet? <laughs> she's getting nervous already like she's some, she knows something's she up she knows huh? something's up she's yep. like wait a minute where's the other two at exactly <laughs> so nella's air force base seems like a pretty nice base <clears throat> we were never actually stationed here um but we did stay here uh two nights ago when we tried to get into thousand trails a day early we couldn't get in so we actually instead of boondocking we stayed at nella's air force base at their fan camp which was pretty nice but um, if you've been stationed here at Nellis, drop it in the comments, let us know. Uh, it seems pretty nice though, I like it so far. Well, did Itty Bitty survive? Barely, she <laughs> did try to bite the vet. What? Yeah, she wasn't bitty. happy about her shots, first time ever. What in the world? They had to put a little muzzle on her. Itty Bitty, bad girl. But she looks traumatized. Cheapest vet we've ever been to for two shots. So. Yeah, that's good. So rabies and a lepto. Lepto. Yep. Sixty bucks. Yep.
we just woke up after a fun night with our brothers and sisters last night and someone stole our freaking e-bikes last night we had them under a cover locked up with a toy lock that goes to the back of our rig and they cut the dang thing and stole the bikes and the cover as you can see still paddle locked but they left their bag, which I haven't gone through yet, and they left the bolt cutters. Cut the line right there. Should have just put the bikes inside, but we didn't. But we had it locked up and we had them covered. You couldn't even really tell what was underneath the cover, but. So now we gotta go see if we can find them, file a report, all that stuff. This just goes to show you, you can take all kinds of necessary steps to prevent theft, and it still happens. I mean, look at this. So here's the bikes, they're right here. I got that security light on. We've got our awning lights on. I mean, this area where the bikes were, were was completely lit up. We've got these lights that were on. They were under a cover. They were locked up. Still didn't matter, because these piece of crap thieves still came into our site. Stole our e-bikes. Not good. They're climbing over this back wall apparently on this thousand trails, Las Vegas, which we're probably never gonna stay here again. I'm sure you understand. You have reached the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department's non-emergency line. If this is a life-threatening emergency, please hang up and dial 911. Please do not hang up. Your call will be answered in the order it was received by the next available call ticket. All right, so I just filed a police report with the Las Vegas Police Department and they are sending somebody out. So we're just waiting on them to show up so we can figure out what to go do next. The uh, So we did end up getting video of them on our ring doorbell. And when they walked by the RV to steal them <clears throat> this morning, they did it like 6.15 this morning, it was broad daylight out. So, but the park actually has really good video of them um, riding the e-bikes right out the gate. So they went right by the ranger station because there's only one way in and one way out of this park. So they're crawling over the walls, stealing stuff, and then escaping. But of course, the, these e-bikes are 75 pounds a piece. They weren't gonna, uh, you know, put them back over the wall. So they rode them right out the gate. <laughs> but the video of them going out the gate is pretty good. Uh, one went out and about three minutes later someone was chasing them so somebody must have saw them stealing them and uh one of the another patron here at the rv park uh was chasing them on my bike and that went out the second you know a few, a few minutes after the first bike went out so <sighs> luckily i did take pictures of the serial numbers when we first bought them just in case something like this happens so we have the serial numbers we have photos of them we've got video of the thieves we got all that but even with all that <clears throat> i highly doubt we're ever going to see them again um but they did leave their bag and i did find a couple credit cards in the bag well one was like a welfare card one was like a prepaid debit card kind of thing that had a name on it uh, i suspect those are probably stolen too i highly doubt that it would be the thieves cards but you never know could get lucky Okay, we just finished talking to the cops. They were actually got here very fast. I was very impressed. And uh, filled out a report and got a case number and all that good stuff. So um, I also emailed him the pictures of uh, the serial numbers for the bikes, pictures of the bikes, and um, the video that I had of them on my ring doorbell. And then he's up at the ranger station right now getting their video. So. He said, in this part of Las Vegas, two e-bikes should stick out like a sore thumb. E-bikes just aren't very popular in this area. So he uh, gave us a little bit of hope that they would be recovered. He said they recovered quite a few stolen properties, uh, vehicles, bis bicycles, that kind of stuff. So we'll see. We're only here for another, well, we're here for another 10 days. So hopefully between now and then they'll, they'll find them. But. I don't know. I have very little hope. And you guys, you bark. Whenever time we, every time we come home, all you guys do is bark, bark, bark. 
and you couldn't even make one little bark people are right outside stealing our bikes not even one little bark really so in light of our current situation i decided to come out and put my disc lock on my motorcycle you know when i first bought it i used to put it on all the time but then you know you get comfortable and then you start putting it on less and less and she's i bet i haven't put it on my bike in five months um my bike does have an alarm on it my motorcycle bike it's pretty loud so it would be difficult to steal the bike without making noise but hey they probably could do it so learn from our mistakes um you might think you're doing well as far as protecting your assets obviously for our situation it wasn't enough you know having them locked up and then having the cover on them i thought was a good theft deterrent you know if you didn't know what was under the cover you know why would you take the time to try to steal it but we think that they probably cased it out first while we were riding our e-bikes around or while they were sitting out in front of the rv you know not covered during the day when we we're using them they probably knew they were there and then came back and stole them so we posted on instagram and youtube and facebook and everything you know our situation and we got a lot of good advice so a couple people said that they use apple air tags and they hide them on their bike that way in the event if they're stolen they can at least try to locate them and others mentioned that uh they make bicycle alarms which i did know about but i just never really pursued it and um, they're like vibration censored, so if the bike moves around, the alarm will go off. Um, so anyway, thanks to all you guys for, for giving us good advice. Um, because, you know, stuff like this you can always learn from. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make the best of the situation and learn from them. Uh, we did file a claim. Uh, we have progressive full-time RVers insurance. So we're hoping that uh, our insurance will cover them since they were assets that were secured to the RV. But waiting to hear back from them, we will see. Because uh, we don't we don't have the money to buy two new ones. <laughs> you know, we're just out. <laughs> so it is what it is. But we'll keep our chins up and uh, hopefully the cops will uh, find them. Also, um, when I did post on Instagram, Electric e-bike company that we uh, that our e-bikes are from commented on our post saying uh, asking for us to send them the serial numbers for our bikes that way if somebody calls in calls into their company wanting like a key or whatever that they could keep an eye out for that so so I did that I sent them pictures of the bikes and the serial numbers of the bikes hopefully with any luck somebody will call in or the cops will find them or something you know so Fingers crossed.